Hi, Neil Son Dynasty, back again. Uh, found this other guy who knows how to uh, put together a video better than I do on uh, why the CCP is going to be dead by 2030. It's not going to be a country anymore. I totally agree. I think by 2025 to 2026, there won't be a country, but, you know, semantics. Uh, I'll give you... The report. Miss Dixie here really, really, really wants attention. She's been bothering me all night. Damn women. Anyhow, uh, here it is. A uh, couple minutes. Ago. There's a dozen major reasons I don't think. Major reasons, but I don't think the training system is going to survive this this decade. But let me give you the two that are absolutely unassailable. Uh, first of all, China is the third most internationally integrated country in the world after the Germans and the Koreans. They are utterly dependent upon globalized access to raw materials and markets the world over. They import the raw materials, they import the technology, people forget that, that, that piece sometimes, and then they export the finished goods. That does not work without a globalized world. And there is no coalition of countries that can replace the United States as the guarantor of that world. And with the Americans going their own way, that's it. The entire economic model doesn't work. Semiconductors is probably the best space to just to see how exposed the Chinese are. They can't make the high-end or the mid-end chips, and they can't make the equipment to make the low-end chips. They are completely dependent upon tech transfers from the rest of the world in order to sustain that entire industry. And now we have the Dutch, the Danes, the Brits, the Japanese, the Koreans, and the Taiwanese, along with the Americans, saying that never again can the Chinese access high-end chips at all. And the question is, what mid-end chips can they have, and whether they should be able to have the equipment necessary to make the low-end chips. So we're talking in the course of just the last few months, their access to that space has stopped. I mean, if they could make the equipment to make the low-end chips, then there's a conversation to be had. But they can't. They've tried. They can't. Uh, they have to get the tech from abroad, and the the Chinese decision to back the Russians in this war has really changed mindsets in Europe, more so than it has on defense matters, believe it or not. And so if the Americans won't allow the high-end stuff to go, and they can't get the equipment to make the low-end, then they are not in that space, except for as we allow drugs and drafts of the technology to transfer. If the Chinese have a significant policy change, and kind of sue for peace as part of a globalization 2.0, there's definitely a conversation to be had there. I don't mean to suggest that that aspect of this is past the point of no return. Uh, that, and, you know, that would be really interesting. This is something that the uh, W administration tried back before the 9-11 attacks, trying to bring China into a new revitalized globalized system. Obviously, we all got a little bit distracted about that. Um, but the second problem, unfortunately, is much worse, and that's the demographic situation. According to the Chinese themselves, with the data they're starting to let out, they've overcounted their population by over 100 million people. Mm -hmm. All of those overcounts for people who would have been born since the one-child policy has been adopted, which was uh, 40 years ago, so people 40 and under. And they were already looking at one of the fastest drop-offs in terms of birth rate in human history. Uh, you know, you need 2.1 births per woman to maintain your population. In their metro centers, they're now below 0.7. I mean, th this is faster than the Korean drop-off, and they haven't developed nearly as much as the Koreans have. So if these numbers are, are true, they're going to lose almost two Americas of population in just the next 30 years. And the average age will be older than the Japanese are now. Uh, this is not something, we don't even have a model. If you're talking about a population that drops by almost half in 30 years and the people that are left are in their 50s and 60s, I, I don't see how that can function. Uh, but we are in an unprecedented times. Uh, I get surprised all the time. Uh, the Chinese still need access to the wider world. I mean, if they, if they can keep their output up, they still need a place to sell it. If the Africans experience Korean-style growth for the next 30 years, it doesn't even take them a quarter of the way of where they would need to do to be able to sustain that level of consumption. And that the United States will force some sort of second phase globalization on the world? Yes, but what made globalization one work is most of the world is devastated. 
And not only was the American deal good, it was really the only one on the table. I don't think there's a belief at this point that the United States is willing to go that far or cut to the bone that much on economic matters in order to get its way. Uh, the American political system really is in a period of retrenchment, regardless of what happens with Biden and Trump. And the degree of leadership that that would require and the degree of acceptance that the rest of the world would have to generate. You didn't choose cat allergies. Okay.